Good evening, Red Deer. Thank you for joining us this evening as we are coming to you from the city of Red Deer with Mayor Tara Beer and Emergency Operations Director Karen Mann. We are going to provide you an update this evening on the city of Red Deer's municipal response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will follow that with some questions from our uh, local media, as well as uh, fielding a few of the questions that our public may be posing on our Facebook live feed this evening. Mayor Beer. Good evening, Red Deer. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. We hope that you and your loved ones are keeping safe during these unprecedented times. First and foremost, I'd like to begin on behalf of Red Deer City Council by thanking each and every one of you for all that you are doing to help prevent the spread in our community. As you're aware, the City of Red Deer continues to closely monitor the COVID-19 situation and we are following and in close alignment with our local response with all federal and provincial protocols daily. As I've mentioned before, our continued focus continues to be virus mitigation and stopping the spread and obviously fo focusing on short-term economic measures uh, to help mitigate uh, the economic hardship in our community and also looking ahead to the long term to economic recovery as well. As many of you will have noted if following uh, the provincial uh, announcement today, there were no additional new restrictions announced today by the province of Alberta. However, the City of Red Deer's Emergency Operations Center continues to remain active and we want to take uh, the time tonight to highlight some of the issues that have been raised over the past couple of days in our community that citizens have raised uh, and that you'll no doubt have read uh, in uh, both online as well as print media as well. So we thought that we would touch base on those. Uh, again, fielding questions with respect to utility deferrals, the City of Red Deer Emergency Operations Center has already made the decision that you do have the option available to you to defer your utility payments if you uh, that is a necess necessity uh, for yourselves. We just invite you to call the call center at 342-8111 to make uh, your own personal billing arrangements. And again, Red Deer City Council is receiving a lot of questions with respect to property tax deferrals. Uh, I have stated before that we support that idea in principle and that will be coming forward within the coming week or so. We hope to have that on the agenda uh, for options uh, for Council to consider. Uh, so that will be the next meeting of Council or the one after that. Uh, but we are actively uh, running through various scenarios uh, so that we can provide our community with an answer. We have also heard from uh, many Red Deerians about the Emergency Operations Center's decision to close community garden plots for this season. Because, sorry, I'll just wait. Okay, I'm good to proceed. Uh, because we know that the garden plot program is near and dear to many residents. Uh, at this time, emergency operations, uh, as you'll no doubt uh, will be aware by this time, is, has made that decision best based on the best av available information that we have at this time. So I will say that the health of all of our citizens is the number one priority for us right now and that the Emergency Operations Center is always open to updating uh, and modifying our approach based on new information as it becomes available. And I will say uh, that this approach is based on uh, the direction that we have uh, and interpretation from the provincial government. Uh, the garden plots do remain closed at this time. Uh, I will, when Director Mann provides her daily briefing, she will provide more rationale uh, because I think that the, the community does have a lot of legitimate questions about why this is the case, particularly that because it's an outdoor amenity. So Director Mann will speak to that very specifically in her remarks today. Uh, and again, I will just note that Council has inquired of that. Emergency Operations uh, Center has gone back and reviewed the best, practice, best practices uh, in the province and the country uh, on that and uh, in response to public feedback, of course. Uh, I will uh, say as well that we are seeking additional clarifications uh, from prov provincial emergency operations uh, because we know that that's an issue of top priority for Red Deerians. So uh, I'll defer that to Director Mann and again as we have more information on that we'll update uh, again uh, as necessary. 
I also uh, want to take the opportunity tonight to thank you all uh, for uh, staying home as much as possible. Uh, we know uh, that people are engaging in that and when you are out and in about in public that you're engaging in physical distancing or social distancing as much as you can and we ask that you continue to uphold that. Uh, despite recent temperatures, uh, certainly uh, we're, we know that spring weather will be right around the corner or uh, in some respects we're hoping for that and that our citizens will want to be outside uh, enjoying the outdoors. And so I will reiterate uh, that as it stands right now, our trail system, our open park spaces and dog parks do remain open. But we do ask you to please uh, maintain physical distancing while you are enjoying these outdoor amenities and at all times remain a minimum of six feet away from others. Uh, and if you are sick, to please honor the Alberta health uh, protocols and to stay inside. Our goal is to keep uh, parks, trails, open parks rather, uh, trails and dog parks open. However, uh, this ability of emergency operations to do that is directly linked uh, to our public's uh, social distancing and respect of that. Uh, so uh, we, we put agency in your hands with respect to that red deer. Uh, as always, we continue to encourage all Red Deerians and Central Albertans to follow the guidelines set out by Alberta Health. Uh, it's critical uh, that we follow the advice of our provincial counterparts and particularly Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hinchock. Community safety throughout this pandemic and, and certainly in the, in the years in the lead up to it has been and will continue to be our top priority for the City of Red Deer. The city, the community uh, at large, our partners and agencies are doing everything that we can to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and to ensure that the safety and well-being of all Red Deerians uh, is upheld during this challenging and highly uncertain time. As you may also be aware, uh, there was information uh, shared last week by the Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness Minister, Federal Minister Bill Blair. The federal minister, uh, as you will have read uh, in some of our local print and online media, has asked the, the heads of Canada's prison system and parole board to consider early release for some federal inmates to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in correctional institutions. Obviously, because crime and safety, uh, public safety is the number one priority of the City of Red Deer and City Council, uh, we have uh, some significant concerns with respect uh, to this request that was made by the Federal uh, Minister of uh, Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. While the City of Red Deer Emergency Operations Center appreciates the need for the Correctional Service of Canada to ensure the safety of their employees as, as well as the inmates in their charge in institutional set settings throughout COVID-19, we are, as a community, we are gravely concerned uh, about the prospect of early release of prisoners, uh, particularly out of interest for general community safety and as a part of our pandemic response, uh, specifically in light of the fact that our community agencies have limited capacity uh, to be able to uh, manage an influx of early release uh, in the community. I will say that on behalf of Red Deer City Council, uh, I issued a letter earlier today to the Federal Minister as well as uh, the Emergency Operations Centre for the City of Red Deer has also written a letter to the Federal uh, Public Safety Minister uh, expressing our concerns and requesting uh, that he pursue alternative means of, of distancing and self-isolation within the institution uh, so that we do not have this undue safety pressure on our community. Uh, I also had the opportunity uh, late last week as well as on the weekend to brief our local members of parliament and our local MLAs about uh, the City of Red Deer's uh, concerns on behalf of our community. Uh, and so I will say, uh, again, just reiterating, this is a, a federal matter. This is a decision of the federal uh, the public safety minister and uh, emergency preparedness. Uh, if our citizens are concerned, we just ask uh, that you would direct your specific uh, position on that uh, to our local members of parliament, 
as well as to the federal minister. Uh, again, the city of Red Deer has informed the federal minister of our position, uh, and uh, we hope that he, uh, he hears our community voice with respect to that matter. Uh, again, just in conclusion, I would like to note that the RCMP are doing everything that they can to keep our community safe during these unprecedented times. And uh, we do not want to add any unnecessary or undue pressures on our local police capacity. And so we will continue to monitor uh, and to brief our community on this uh, critical issue. Uh, just shifting into enforcement in general, uh, as noted before, our local police continue to do proactive patrols uh, throughout our community in order to uphold the safety of all Red Darians. Uh, we encourage citizens to report crimes and all suspicious activity to local uh, police. And if you need information in terms of how health protocols, so not necessarily a criminal activity, but how that provincial and federal health protocols are being upheld, we invite you to go to the City of Red Deer's webpage uh, for additional information on that so that you know where to route your specific concerns. And so as a final note, again, on behalf of our community, we want to thank uh, the staff uh, in our emergency operations center, our frontline essential workers, volunteers, many local organizations and agencies who are doing a, an incredible job of ensuring the well-being of the people of our community. Uh, we invite you to continue to follow reddeer.ca for frequent updates. Uh, and encourage you to visit Alberta Health Services website for the up-to-date uh, provincial health information and provincial restrictions. Uh, we know it's complex because uh, essentially we have three orders of government uh, making decisions on behalf of our citizens. Uh, and so we invite you to uh, visit the City of Red Deer's webpage, Alberta Health Services, as well as the federal government. Uh, and again, our call center will remain open. We continue to be in a local state of emergency so that we can fast track our decision making and be highly responsive in the public health and safety interests of Red Deerians. The call center remains open at 342-8111. Uh, we want to thank you all for all that you're doing to help uh, spread the, to help stop the spread of COVID-19. And we want to uh, express that we hope that you and your loved ones continue to remain safe. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my name is Karen Matt. I'm the Emergency Operations Center Director for the City of Red Deer. And this, uh, uh, this evening, I'm pleased to come and speak to you in relation to what the Emergency Operations Center has been doing uh, throughout this COVID-19 response. We remain open. We remain um, steadfast in our commitment to ensuring health and safety of our residents and to coordinating with our agency partners and our region to ensure that we all come out of this COVID-19 situation um, safe, healthy, and together. I want to start by thanking for thanking you, our residents, for your continued support um, and for following the important direction of our provincial health officials. Thank you for social distancing. Thank you for washing your hands. Thank you for looking out for each other. Thank you for checking in with each other to help ensure that nobody feels alone during this period of physical distancing. We also thank you for staying home. If you do not have to be out right now, please don't go up. Stay home, uh, stay safe, and protect those around you. With that being said, we do want to remind people uh, about our traffic enforcement. We have received many questions about playground zones, school zones, and speed limits in our residential areas. And we remind residents that the safety of all of you depends on um, our ability to navigate this complex situation together. And one of the things that we can do is slow down. Slow down and watch for pedestrians. There is no reason to be speeding through playground zones. Playground zones do remain in effect. We've heard of um, some situations involving excessive speeding in high traffic areas. And for that, we just want to remind people that the RCMP and our municipal enforcement will continue to uh, focus on high risk areas where pedestrians are present to ensure that we do not have any incidents uh, involving pedestrians, um, collisions, 
anything that um, will put undue strain on our first responders, undue strain on our healthcare system at this time. So slow down, pay attention, and mind all posted speed limits. By driving at safe speed, we can help to ease the burden um, on police and health resources as we continue through COVID-19. We do, however, encourage all of our residents to get outside, use our parks safely with physical distancing. The dog park does remain open, but we do implore people to social distance in those areas, avoid touching any high contact areas like fences, benches, garbage cans, um, use hand sanitizer if you have it, wash your hands frequently, don't touch your face when you're out and about in our community. Uh, keep your distance, that's two meters apart. Um, our municipal enforcement with assistance from the RCMP do continue to work hard to navigate through um, the public health orders that have been implemented. Uh, the lead agency for enforcement of public health orders is Environmental Public Health, which is a part of Alberta Health Services. So they are receiving the majority of the um, concerns related to potential violations from businesses and individuals. However, they are working with the RCMP and our municipal enforcement um, on matters that require additional support. If you do have um, something to report, we posted the link for environmental public health on our reddeer.ca webpage and the links as well as some helpful infographics about enforcement and reporting are located on reddeer.ca as well. As Mayor Beer mentioned, we did have to make a difficult decision this year to suspend garden plots. Um, this was a, an unfortunate decision, but it was the right decision when we think about the recommendations that have been provided to us from public health, including uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dina Henshaw. While it is possible that physical distancing between plots could have been achieved, the densities of city-run gardens and parking areas make it difficult to ensure that all gardeners follow necessary regulations. Additionally, some garden plots are operated by multiple families and tools are often shared, which contradicts Alberta Health Services regulations for social distancing as well as multiple person gatherings. At this time, we made this decision based on public health restrictions and guidance. As with anything that any decision that's been made by this emergency operations center, we are continually reevaluating based on the information we received from the Chief Medical Officer of Health and Alberta Health Services. We reevaluate our decisions, and if we we receive um, direction indicating that a change in policy or direction is required, we can always adjust. Uh, additionally, as you may be aware already, the city has suspended event permits up until June thirtieth. Um, existing event permits that were for events occurring prior to June 30th have been notified and have been cancelled. Uh, we will not be approving any special event permits for events occurring before June 30th and we will be continually reevaluating um, moving forward our um, issuance of additional special event permits. This does include the downtown public market which was set to open in May at this time. This is a public event that will not be um, able to start prior to June 30th and this information um, is I'm sure unfortunate for our residents. We know that that's something people look forward to. However, in the name of social distancing and adhering to the uh, stringent recommendations of environmental public health and the Chief Medical Officer of Health, we um, have not approved this event to open prior to June 30th. We know that cancellations and closures are disappointing, especially as the temperature begins to rise and we start looking forward to our spring and summer events in our community. But these decisions are absolutely the right decisions if we want to ensure that the number of cases of COVID-19 in our community remains low. We want to continue to combat the spread of COVID-19 and we can only do this if we work together. We encourage you to stay up to date on the latest health-related information at ahs.ca slash COVID and also stay up to date on what Red Deer is doing and what we um, and information that we have available for you at reddeer.ca. We're all in this together and we'll get through this together. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your partnership. And first and foremost, I thank you for looking out for each other. With that, thank you, have a great night, and we look forward to answering your questions.
We are first going to take a few questions from our local media this evening. So we have a, a few questions from Josh Hall at Red Deer News Now. Josh's first question is, has the city considered suspending the restriction on seasonal parking of RVs? I'm gonna pass that to our Emergency Operations Center Director, Karen Matt. Hi, thanks for the question, Josh. So the City of Red Deer's Emergency Operations Center um, a couple of weeks ago made the decision to suspend enforcement of on-street RV um, or motorhome parking, as well as the restrictions that relate to parking trailers and RVs in your driveway. So at this time, those two parts of our municipal bylaw are not going to be enforced, as we know some people are using these locations um, as social for social isolation, pardon me. Um, that being said, we do remind people to about safe use of propane, not to dump their RV or their trailer uh, directly into the storm drain, um, and also to ensure that they are not parking in any fire zones or any restricted parking areas, uh, because those areas will still be subject to compliance. Uh, so you can park on the street, you can park in your driveway, but ensure that you're also adhering to other um, on-street rules and regulations from the bylaw. Another question from Josh at RD News Now is related to bylaw and policing. So um, RD News Now has asked what bylaw and policing are doing to manage so social distancing in places like super supermarkets and in uh, retail stores such as Walmart and Superstore. And I'll pass this to Emergency Operations Center Director Karen Matt. Hi, thanks for the question, Josh. So the City of Red Deer is working alongside environmental public health to ensure the compliance with um, public health orders related to COVID-19. So um, in terms of orders that were issued by the Chief Medical Officer of Health for businesses and gatherings, the primary, um, the first point of contact is environmental public health. So we've posted a link for how residents can report concerns such as social distancing or the adherence to um, essential services um, or essential businesses um, regulations. We've posted that information on our website to make it easily accessible for residents. In the situation where environmental public health requires additional assistance, they are coordinating directly with um, the RCMP and our municipal enforcement um, community peace officers. So it's a, a group effort, however, the primary focus is on environmental public health. Thanks. One final question that we have from Josh at RD News Now relates to um, bylaw and policing around people riding in the same vehicle. So do we have any measures uh, or controls around passengers riding in the same vehicle together while maintaining social distancing? Josh, thanks for that question. So Dr. Hinshaw is our source of information when it comes to these types of directions. And this is a challenging one and we know that lots of folks have questions about whether people are allowed to drive in vehicles together with people who are not members of their immediate family group with whom they would be socially isolating. Um, there's a bit of an exception that Dr. Hinshaw has outlined. However, the primary recommendation is for people to maintain physical distancing even when they are driving. So if you do not absolutely have to drive with somebody who is not a member of your um, at-home social isolation group, like your family members or your children, um, the recommendation is not to do so. So that um, would be our primary recommendation to residents. Um, businesses are also required to um, consider social distancing when asking employees to drive together, ride share, etc. So um, if people have any questions specific to this, we encourage them to visit ahs.ca slash COVID or to report their concerns to that environmental public health reporting um, link that we've posted on redger.ca. Thanks for the question. At this time,
time we're going to take a few questions from our live uh, public Facebook feed. So one of the questions that has been posed to us this evening is around when Red Deer will be back up and running. I will pass that question to Mayor Pierre. That's a great uh, question and certainly one uh, that I think every uh, Red Deerian and certainly every Albertan and Canadian uh, wants to know the answer to. Uh, I think the simple answer is that there is no one who knows specifically when. However, uh, because we will need to keep monitoring the situation, it will depend uh, on uh, how uh, the virus proliferation in our province and what the federal and provincial orders of government and specifically the medical officer of health indicates in terms of the, the length of the necessity for social distancing. Uh, I do think, however, it's important to be very transparent with what we do know. The City of Red Deer has made the decision uh, through our Emergency Operations Centre that all city facilities and public events uh, will be postponed or cancelled until June 30th. Uh, in terms of the extreme uh, measures around the restrictions, uh, I think it's fair to say that citizens can expect that to be, this is our new normal, uh, and we can expect it uh, for April and May, and likely part of June as well. Uh, but again, uh, I'm a bit reluctant uh, to share a specific window of time, uh, because the June 30th is, uh, deadline is probably a best case scenario. Uh, depending on the spread of the virus in our province and our collective ability to flatten the curve that Dr. Hinshaw refers to, uh, it could potentially go on further. Uh, but in the spirit of transparency, this is our new normal uh, and uh, this will uh, likely be the scenario that we find ourselves navigating through together, certainly for April, for May, uh, and likely for June as well. And then, as noted, we will revisit that June 30th deadline as new information becomes available uh, the longer uh, we go through the pandemic. So the city of Red Deer had made the difficult decision to close playgrounds, and we do have some questions being posed on our Facebook feed around uh, closure of those playgrounds, but more specifically around what else that might include, such as closures of picnic be benches, um, can you have picnics in park spaces, that type of thing. So I will look to our Emergency Management Director, Karen Mann, to speak specifically about um, playgrounds might be closed, but is it okay for people to be in our public park spaces? Thanks for that question. Um, unfortunately, the City of Red Deer did make the decision to close playgrounds and a number of our recreation and parks amenities, and this decision was 100% based on recommendations from Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dina Hinshaw, as well as Alberta Health Services. So these, um, as this situation has progressed, the number of closures and impacts to amenities has obviously changed um, as we've added more amenities um, and closures to this list. So one in particular that um, some have been asking about is Riverbend Golf and, uh, Golf and Recreation Area. So this particular area is closed until um, the clubhouse and the buildings on site, as well as the much loved playground at this Riverbend area. Those are all closed to the public at this time. Trails and the green park spaces can still be used uh, as long as people are following appropriate social distancing protocols. So we still encourage people to um, not touch um, high touch areas. So your handrails, uh, picnic benches, playground equipment, um, any sort of touch point where you don't have ready access to hand wash or to sanitize your hands. We just encourage people to be very aware of, of not touching anything if they can, can avoid it in these areas. So Riverbend is one. Um, another one is about picnics and being able to get out in the park. Absolutely, if you're picnicking with members of your family cohort that you're also isolating with at home, uh, to use the the park or a green space in your area for this purpose would be appropriate. However, again, we just encourage people not to touch the um, the amenities. So you're talking about your park benches, picnic tables, those types of things. We'd encourage you to try to avoid those um, and to continue to wash your hands and sanitize your hands regularly in those areas. Thanks for the question.
One final question we have this evening that we have fielded a number of times and we'll provide you a response tonight as well is around tax deferrals and if the city of Red Deer has any plans currently for the deferral of residential property taxes. Mayor Beer. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so I'm just going to come back to the previous question uh, that Dir Director Mann had answered. Uh, so again, if there is gathering in the open uh, park spaces in the community, the provincial guideline of not having public gatherings larger uh, than groups of 15 people is still in effect. Uh, so there's layering of different orders of government. So if you're using uh, the open park, uh, you're free to do that, provided the group that you're with does not exceed 15 people in compliance with the provincial protocols uh, and that members of the, uh, the members within that group uh, remain physically distanced. Uh, coming to tax deferrals, uh, again, uh, I've addressed this in my formal remarks. The City of Red Deer supports the prospect of tax deferrals in principle. We have not, as a council, yet made a determination of the scope of that. Uh, obviously, it is a significant uh, matter in terms of some of the mechanics and administration, uh, administration of that program. Uh, but I will say we expect an answer on that very shortly. Our emergency operations staff are preparing options for Red Deer City Council. That recommendation will go to City Council, we are hoping, on Monday. Uh, and then ho hopefully, provided that we have enough information, we can render a decision on Monday and have an answer uh, for you with respect to that. Uh, but again, I know this is an area of significant uh, concern, uh, obviously having to do with the cash flow of local businesses and households, uh, but I will uh, say that we support the idea of property tax deferral in principle. Uh, so we're looking at the scope of, of how we can deliver that and who that will apply to, and that will be determined hopefully on Monday at Council. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Red Deer. We encourage you, if you have questions, please visit our website at www.reddeer.ca. Also, our uh, uh, City of Red Deer call center is open from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And they can help answer any questions you have, or if it's not our question to answer, to redirect you to where it may be. Um, again, our website, reddeer.ca. If you're looking for that health-related information, please visit Alberta Health Services website. Um, at ahs.ca. Thank you, Red Deer. Good night.